Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud, and today I'm going to be teaching you Chapter 1, Lesson 3 of Algebra 1. Today we're going to be solving equations with variables on both sides of the equation. And these are very good steps to keep in mind. Maybe you want to keep this someplace handy until you are uh, very confident in solving equations. So step one is if you have parentheses, you need to use the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. Step two is to simplify both sides of the equation. So if you have a couple of x's on one side, you want to put those together. Or if you have a couple of um, constants numbers, you need to put those together. Step three is to start moving things around. So we're going to move all the variable side, all the variable terms to one side and all the constant terms to the other side. Step four is to isolate the variable. And then step five is to check your solution. OK, so I'm going to be doing all of the even numbers with you. And then I'll have you try the odd numbers on your own. So let's take a look at number two. The first thing we need to do is put our line down the equal sign and circle our variables so that we can keep those in mind and know what we're supposed to do with those. So if you look at those steps from up above, we actually don't need to do steps one and two. So we can just go to straight to step three, which is collecting the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So it doesn't really matter how you do that. I'm going to uh, go ahead and subtract 5z from the left, which means I also have to do it on the right. And at the same time, so when I do that, um, these cancel out. And at the same time, I'm also going to move my 7 over. So what's going to happen now is that my constants are no longer on the left side and my variables are no longer on the right side. So on the left side, I have negative 10z. And on the right side, I have 17 minus 7, which is 10. So now all I need to do is solve for the variable, which is to divide out my negative 10 on both sides. And that cancels those. And I'm left with z is equal to negative 1. OK, let's check our solution. So 7 minus 5z, which we got as negative 1, should equal 17 plus 5, also times negative 1, because that's what we got for z. So this is 7, negative 5 times negative 1 is plus 5. And we have 17, and we have 5 times negative 1 is minus 5. So that is 12 equaling to 12. So we know we got it right. Fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 4. I'm going to draw my line. I'm not going to bother circling the variables yet, because I notice I have parentheses. So first step is to get rid of those parentheses by using the distributive property. I'm going to need to use it on both sides. So since we have a fraction on the left, I'm going to go ahead and use keep that fraction for just a minute. So 3 fourths times 48, I'm going to change it to 48 over 1, minus 3 fourths times 16 over 1x. OK, so I'll come back and simplify that later. On the right side, I have 4 times 4, which is 16, and 4 times 2x, which is 8x. OK, so now let's simplify what's on the left-hand side. So I can simplify the 48 uh, divided by 4, and that gives me a 1 here and a 12. And then I can also simplify the 16 and the 4 here, so that gives me a 1 and a 4. All right, so we have 3 times 12, which is 36. And then minus 3 times 4 is 12x equals, and I can't do anything over there, 16 plus 8x. OK, so now I'm in a position like I was in number 2, where I need to move all of my variables over to one side and move all of my constants over to the other side. So I'm going to take the 8x and move it over to the left. So my variables are gone now from the right side. So at the same time, we're going to move our constants over. So I'm going to move the 36. OK, and when we do that, the constants are gone from the left side. OK, so we have negative 12 and negative 8 add to negative 20. And on the right, we have uh, 16 and negative 36. So those are enemies. We need to subtract them. So 36 minus 16 is 20. So that would be negative 20. Now we need to solve for x. So divide by negative 20. And I get x is equal to positive 1. All right, let's go ahead and plug that back in and see how we did. So we have 3 fourths times 48 minus, now it's 16 times 1, so that would just be 16. 
is going to equal 4 times 4 plus 2 times 1, which is 2. So we have 30, 3 fourths, and then 48 minus 16 is 32. And then on the right, we have 4 times, and then this is 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 times 6 is 24. OK, so let's simplify this. 32 divided by 4 is 8, so 8 times 3 is 24. So it ended up working out. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 6. Draw my line. This time I, I am going to circle my variables. I notice that I have two variables on the left, so that means I do need to do step 2, which is to combine like terms. So I want to put those two together. So I'm going to keep my 8. 6 minus 10 is negative 4. And on the right, it'll be 16 minus 8x still. We haven't done anything with that. So now we need to move our constants over to one side and our variables over to the other side. So I'm going to move my variables first, minus, or sorry, plus 8x. So plus 8x. So when we do that, the variables disappear on that side. And now I'm going to uh, subtract 8. And when I do that, the constants are gone from that side. OK, so uh, 8 and negative 4 is uh, positive 4x. And then we have 16 minus 8, which is 8. Last step, divide out the 4. And I get x is equal to 2. OK, so let's go ahead and plug that back in, see how we did. 8 plus 6 times 2 minus 10 times 2 is going to equal, or it should equal, 16 minus 8 times 2. All right, so we have 8 plus 6 times 2 is 12 minus 10 times 2 is 20 equals 16 minus 16. Well, oh, that's going to be 0. Interesting. OK, so let's see if this works. Uh, 8, 8 plus 12 is 20. So 20 minus 20 is equal to 0. Oh, excellent. We did it right. OK, I'd like for you to pause the video and do numbers 1, 3, and 5 on your own, and then turn the video back on and see how you did. All right, here are my answers. Check your answers and see how you did. If you got anything wrong, see if you can find your mistakes. Let's take a look at number 8. So I'm going to draw my line. First thing I need to do is distribute. So 2 times 4b is 8b, and 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And on the right side, 4 times 3b is 12b. And 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. So now it's time to start moving things around. I'm going to take my, my, uh, my variables and subtract them off. So negative 12b on both sides. And then that means that there's not going to be any more variables on the right. And I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And that means my constants are gone from the left. So I have 8 and negative 12 add to negative 4b. And on the right side, I have negative 28 and positive 12, which is negative 16. Divide by negative 4. And my answer is b is equal to positive 4. OK, let's go ahead and plug it back in and see how we did. And I see that I get the right answer. All right, let's take a look at number 10. I'm going to draw my line, and I need to uh, get rid of my parentheses first, so I need to distribute. Now, this one is a little bit tricky. A lot of people make mistakes when they distribute uh, something that has a negative out front. You have to make sure that that negative carries through for the whole entire part. So the 3x stays the same. So now I have negative 8 times 2x, which is negative 16x. And then over here, I have negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. It's one of the most common mistakes I see people make is not bringing that negative through to both parts when they are being distributed. So watch out for that mistake. OK, here we have negative 6 times 2x, which is negative 12x. And negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. All right, um, I see that I have two variables here on the left. So I need to go ahead and combine those together next. And we have uh, 3 and negative 16 is negative 13x minus 24 is equal to, and I don't do anything on the right side, negative 12x minus 30. All right, so now I'm ready to start moving my variables over. I'm going to move over the negative 12 by adding it on both sides. 
and those cancel there. At the same time, I'm going to add my 24 by moving it over, and so those cancel there. And we get a negative 1x on the left, and negative 30 and positive 24 is negative 6. And so now I'm going to divide out my negative 1, and so I get x is equal to positive 6. All right, I'm going to plug that back in and make sure that worked. And it does indeed work. Um, some of you guys might want to skip the step of checking your answer, and I would encourage you not to skip that step, especially if you're taking a quiz or a test. It's always good to just to double check your work. It doesn't take that much time. Okay, I'd like for you to try number seven and nine, please. Pause the video and then turn it back on to see how you did. All right, here's what I got. Number seven, A equals three. Number nine, R equals five. If you got them wrong, please see if you can find your mistakes. For numbers 11 through 14, we want to solve the equation, but this time we're going to have something interesting happen. Some of them might have a solution, just like our other ones did, but some of them might have no solution or infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. The first step is just to solve, just like we normally did on the previous questions. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line for number 11. I'm going to distribute 6 times 4 is 24s, and 6 times 12 is 72. 8 times 3s is 24s, and 8 times negative 14 is negative 112. Okay, so now we're going to solve for the variables. I'm going to move over my 24s, and I notice that something interesting happens here. Notice that they cancel. I don't have any more variables left, so I'm not going to bother moving my 72 over, although I could if I wanted to. And I'm just going to say that we have 72 is equal to negative 112. So whenever you have the variables disappear, your answer is either going to be no solution or infinitely many solutions. And how you determine that is by looking and seeing what you get. In this case, 72 equals negative 112 is very definitely false. There's no way that that could happen. So anytime you get a false answer, the answer will be no solution. And what that means is that there is absolutely no answer to this. It doesn't matter what number I plug in for S, nothing, absolutely nothing is going to work. There is no solution. All right, let's take a look at number 12. So I'm going to draw my line, and first step is to get rid of the parentheses on the right side. The left side, there's nothing for me to do yet, so I'm just going to leave it as the same. 8 times 2f is 16f, and 8 times 3 is 24. So now we're going to move our uh, variables over. I'm going to minus 16f, and I notice that the variables cancel again, just like they did on number 11. But this time I end up getting 24 is equal to 24, and this is true. So anytime you get a true statement, your answer is going to be infinitely many solutions. So this is just the opposite of number 11. That means that it doesn't matter what I choose for f, it will always work. Go ahead, pick a number, 0, 100, the symbol pi. It doesn't matter what you choose. If you plug it into the equation, it's going to work. Just for fun, let's go ahead and try 100. Check it out. 100 worked. Because if I plug in 100, I end up getting 1,624 equals 1,624. It doesn't matter what I choose. Every single number on the number line, and even irrational numbers, will always work for this problem. You go ahead and try number 13 and 14 and determine whether it has a solution or no solution or infinitely many solutions. For numbers 13 and 14, they did end up having a solution. All right, last problem. The value of the surface area of a rectangular prism we're told is equal to the value of the volume. Now this doesn't always happen. It just is true in this particular case. We want to write and solve an equation to find the value of x. Okay, so I wrote surface area equals volume. So let's talk about the surface area. First of all, I'm going to take a look. I have a, a square here that's uh, 6 times 6, which is 36, and it's copied over on this side. So there's two of them. 
So I'm going to do two squares that are 6 multiplied by 6. And now let's take a look at our uh, other squares. So if you notice the one in the front here, it is 6 times x. And if you look at it, there's actually four of those that are all the same. The one in the front and the one in the back is 6x. And then the one on the top and the one on the bottom is also 6x. So there's four of them. So I'm going to add 4 times 6x. Now, to find the volume of any rectangular prism, it's length times width times height. So in this, time, in this case, it'll be x times 6 times 6. OK, let's go ahead and simplify this. We have 2 times 6 times 6, so that's 36 multiplied by 2, which is 72 here. And then I have 6 times 4, which is 24. So that's 24x. And on the right, we have 6 times 6, which is 36x. Okay, I'm going to move my x's over, and I'm going to move my numbers over. Oops, that's 72 minus 72. Okay, when we do that, we have the 72's cancel on this side, the 36's cancel on this side, and I have negative 36 and positive 24 is negative 12x, and then I have negative 72, so I'm going to divide by negative 12 and I end up getting x is equal to positive 6. So that is my answer. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good day.